Welcome again to my channel. Our presentation in this video will discuss the topic, the composition of the Earth's interior. But before that, let us have a brief discussion or introduction of the different topics to be discussed in this module. Scientists have studied heavenly bodies which are millions of miles away from the Earth. Equipped with powerful telescopes and space probes, they will be able to reach and examine the solar system and beyond. It seems ironic then that we haven't and we couldn't reach the center of our very own planet. From the previous modules, you have learned about the different processes and landforms around plate boundaries that slowly shaped the Earth's surface. In this discussion, you will learn the connection between these processes with the internal structure and mechanisms of our planet. This module will help you visualize and understand the composition and structure of the Earth's interior. It provides you scientific knowledge that will help you describe the different layers of the earth as well as understand their characteristics. You will also learn concepts that explain the physical changes that it underwent in the past. It helps develop your critical thinking skills to have a deeper understanding about the planet where you live. At the end of this discussion, you will be able to answer the following questions. First, how do the structure and composition of the Earth cause geologic activities and physical changes? Next is, what are the possible causes of the lithospheric plate movements? Third, what proves the movement of the tectonic plates? Topics to be discussed are the composition of the Earth's interior, composed of crust, mantle, and core, the continental drift theory, magnetic reversals, plate tectonic theory, and convection current. And these topics will be discussed separately. And now, let's start the first topic which is the composition of the Earth's interior. Scientists tried to explore and study the interior of the Earth, yet, until today, there are no mechanical probes or actual explorations done to totally discover the deepest region of the Earth. The Earth's composition tells a story about itself. It gives us clues to its past and proofs about the gradual and slow changes that it has undergone for over 4.6 billion years. The Earth is made up of three layers, the crust, the mantle, and the core. The study of these layers is mostly done in the Earth's crust since the mechanical probes are impossible due to the tremendous heat and very high pressure underneath the Earth's surface. The crust. The crust is the thinnest and the outermost layer of the Earth that extends from the surface to about 32 kilometers below. Underneath in some mountains, the crust thickness extends to 72 kilometers. The Earth's crust is subdivided into two regions, the continental crust and the oceanic crust. The continental crust is mainly made up of silicon, oxygen, aluminum, calcium, sodium, and potassium. The thickness of the continental crust is mostly 35 to 40 kilometers. Continental crust found under the land masses, which is made of less dense rocks such as granite. The oceanic crust is around 7 to 10 kilometers thick, which its average thickness is 8 kilometers. It is found under the ocean floor and is made of dense rocks such as basalt. The oceanic crust is heavier than the continental crust. The crust consists of two layers, 
The upper layer is composed of granite and is only found in the continental crust. Below the granite is a layer made mainly of basalt. This is found on both under continents and the oceans. Table shows the different elements that compose the Earth's crust and its percentage. It shows that the oxygen is the most abundant element in the Earth's crust, having a 46.60%, while hydrogen has the least percentage in the Earth's crust with 0.14%. The mantle. Beneath the crust is the mantle, which extends to about 2,900 kilometers from the Earth's surface. It makes up about 80% of the Earth's total volume and about 68% of its total mass. The mantle is mainly made up of silicate rocks and contrary to common belief, is solid since both secondary waves and primary waves pass through it. The attempt to study the Earth's mantle extended as far as studying the rocks from volcanoes simply because they were formed in the mantle. Scientists also studied rocks from the ocean floor. They have determined that the mantle is mostly made of the elements silicon, oxygen, iron, and magnesium. The lower part of the mantle consists of more iron than the upper part. This explains that the lower mantle is denser than the upper portion. The temperature and the pressure increase with depth. The high temperature and pressure in the mantle allows the solid rock to flow slowly. The crust and the uppermost part of the mantle form a relatively cool, outermost rigid shell called lithosphere and is about 50 to 100 kilometers thick. These lithospheric plates move relative to each other. Beneath the lithosphere lies the soft, weak layer known as a stenosphere, made of hot molten material. Its temperature is about 300 to 800 degrees Celsius. The upper 150 kilometers of the asthenosphere has a temperature enough to facilitate a small amount of melting and make it capable to flow. This property of the asthenosphere facilitates the movement of lithospheric plates. The lithosphere with the continents on top of it is being carried by the flowing asthenosphere. The core. The core is subdivided into two layers, the inner and the outer core. The outer core is 2,900 kilometers below the Earth's surface. It is 2,250 kilometers thick and is made up of iron and nickel. The temperature in the outer core reaches up to 2,000 degrees Celsius at this very high temperature, iron and nickel melt. Aside from the seismic data analysis, the Earth's magnetic field strengthens the idea that the Earth's outer core is molten liquid. The outer core is mainly made up of iron and nickel moving around the solid inner core creating earth's magnetism the inner core is made up of solid iron and nickel and has a radius of 1300 kilometers its temperature reaches to about 5000 degrees celsius the extreme temperature could have molten the iron and nickel but it is believed to have solidified as a result of pressure freezing which is common to liquids subjected under the tremendous pressure. Discontinuity is inside the Earth. The Earth's interior is made up of different kinds of materials. Unique layers according to their characteristics inside the Earth. All those layers are separated from each other through a transition zone. 
these transition zones are called discontinuities. Here are the following discontinuities inside the Earth. Thanks for now. Hope that you liked and learned from this discussion. Kindly subscribe my YouTube channel Science Time Discussion by clicking the button. Thank you very much. Have a blessed day everyone.